Hello there, once again, this is Anton from Antonimo Bay, and thank you for stopping by the collection room. Uh, today I'm taking a look at some Flare comics that I picked up. Uh, these are Heroic Publishing. I have very little knowledge of these. Um, I knew they existed, uh, but I did not know like that all of them were still running at this point. I knew about all the stuff in the 80s and 90s of, of Flare and Heroic Publishing, but I... And I knew that they still had flair going in some degree, but I didn't know it was like still an ongoing thing. Um, so this is uh, Heroic Publishing's 20 year anniversary up here in the top corner says, and this was from 2006. So I don't know if they're still going or not, but I was intrigued that they had a little, a lot of them on eBay. And I picked this whole lot up for about $8, I think with shipping. So I was pleased, pleased with that. Thought I'd give the new flair a try. Like I said, I've had a couple of the older issues. I just never, I never really looked into them, never opened them up. Uh, I was more intrigued with the old flair. I'm more intrigued with older comics and anything made after 2000, I'm a lot more hesitant to even open. And since these are, you know, post 2000, uh, they were stuff that I knew existed, but didn't really get into looking at. So I mean, I will, I obviously have, I'm, I'm opening them up now. So uh, as, as, Comics that I once viewed as being new comics, I now look at and realize, oh, those are those are over 20 years old now, or you know, nearly 20 years old. Some of the stuff, I kind of look at it differently, and I think, well, maybe I'll give it a shot. Maybe I'll give it a chance. I'll at least look at it. Um, the art in this looks good. It looks like they kept her original costume um, somewhat. This is a slight variation. I did see the uh, the white cape, white collar. Uh, costume in here at some point, which is my favorite of the flare uniforms. But um, I see they've got oh, it's the official flare chronology. So there is okay, because that's helpful. Like this is helpful because I actually have a whole bunch of issues of flare, and because they did so many reprints and like okay, they had a couple issues here, and then they put it together in a. Uh, a collected edition comic and then they would reprint that I really didn't know what the timeline was so the fact that they gave us a timeline of all this uh, that's very helpful I'm glad they did that uh, looks like they stick a little story in the back um, it's got I can't remember I can't I don't think this is flare but I love her outfit the yellow and the orange I've, I've seen it in here before and I really like it I don't think it's Flair in a different costume. I think it's, a, it's totally just a different character whose name I cannot recall because she didn't appear in very many of the old ones uh, that I have. I just remember her in appearing in a lot of these newer ones that I've looked at. Dolph and the Crunchbird. Interesting name. You can order the next six issues of Flair for only $18, which is... I think cover price, because I think these are $2.99 a piece, yeah. So basically cover price. Interesting little short story in the back there. All right, one down. Like I said, don't know a ton about these. Um, I know they, they do kind of remind me of Femforce in the way that um, it's an older book, uh, independent publisher. You've got a very... Well, it's very female led, but it's also like, okay, we didn't update our costume for the last 30 years because we don't want to, we don't need to. And that kind of reminds me a little bit of, of Femme Force. They, they, they do update their costumes occasionally, but pretty much running on the same, uh, same outfit that they were running clear back in 1985. And I appreciate that refusal to update with the times. Um, about the book. And I feel like this book has a little bit of that going on too. And I also appreciate that. And there is the Champions, um, Icicle, Rose, uh, I want to say his name's like Giant Guardian or Guardian or Galactic something. Um, I can't remember. can't remember everybody's name, but I'm glad to see that they're in this book. Wait, no, that's Flare. There should be. That's Icicle. No, Icicle was a girl. What the hell is Icicle? Anyway, Champions, whose names I can't remember.
So yeah, as I said before, I interrupted myself. They do remind me a lot of Fem Force in that way that um, the way it's drawn, the way it's it's it holds its retro roots. It hasn't gone like super super modern and stuff like that. I appreciate that, and I also think it compares to them because uh, nobody's heard of it. I can tell you, uh, this last couple of weeks, uh, traveling and stuff, I did stop in at a few comic book stores and I ask, hey, do you guys have any Femforce? Uh, can you carry? Do you, have you ever heard of them? Do you have any AC Comics? And the answer is no. A Spark Plug Adventure. That's her name. Okay, Spark Plug. I could not remember her name at all, but I love that character design. Just look at that. Orange and yellow. Who thought they would work so well together? Gotta dig it. Who wears fedoras anymore? This is an oldie. Somebody got hit by a car. Who doesn't have shoes on? And to the Black Enchantress, order six issues of either title, each for only $18. Yeah, to think that that's a bargain now. You look at comic prices now and it's just ridiculous. We get the second part to that weird stick man story in the back. With the weird little girls and the, the chicken stuff. A little bit odd. Alter Ego. Uh, this is an old, like, early 90s. I'm glad to see that that looks like the golden age lives again. It was reprinted in the early 90s. I'm pretty sure it was older than that when they originally had it. But old comics, sometimes it seems, never die. They just keep getting reprinted. Um, this cover, of course, you have to love because it has all the staples of a perfect comic book cover. Essentially, this might be a perfect comic book cover. Um, you have pretty superhero lady with blonde hair. You have a giant dinosaur. She's in the mouth. That is a, a important fact. Uh, your hero has to be in the mouth of the dinosaur, either propping it up or whatever. Uh, but in this case, she's just standing in the mouth. She just punched or wiped out this giant space gorilla who's in a spacesuit. Spacesuits are important. Gorillas are important. She hit it with a shark. Sharks are also a key element to a good um, classic comic book cover. You have a giant robot in the corner. You have a rocket ship. And you have UFOs. Um, and all of this in the span of a nuclear explosion. So I think this this is the perfect comic book cover right there. Mark that down. Flare, number 33, May 2006. We hit the pinnacle. That's it. And as we open it up, can, can the inside possibly, possibly compete with that cover? Okay, we have an octopus. I would have liked to have seen the octopus on the cover, but we didn't. Um, I can live with that. I guess it's hard to say we got all sorts of weird hijinks going on okay you know what I have to do say it is living up to its cover because everything featured on the cover I am seeing in this book and that is all good Now she's hitting the dinosaur with the shark. The shark is actually asking for help. Wowza. Ooh, flare back issues. Might have to look for some of those because, uh, I mean, if, you're, if your comic book has reached the pinnacle like this, uh, maybe it's one I need to look at a little bit closer. I also don't know how, uh, I've never heard of this issue before or this because it should, it should by all means be uh, a landmark occasion. I also like to see that we're also getting reprinted newer updates of Tigris, uh, another side character that I really appreciated from these series, is the older flares. Uh, I'm really digging Sparkplug. Uh, I like that her name is Sparkplug. <laughs> I don't know who this little white haired gal is. She reminds me of Sin from the Fen Force. That's always good. Liberty Girl, Premiere. 
I don't know how I feel about that. It looks a little coppery. I don't know. I will, I will put my feelers out and see if I can find one of those because uh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm very interested that they updated Tigris and are still making those. Max Attack, also in this issue, Liberty Girl, so we can actually kind of see her in some action. You know, all in all, I can't say, uh, the vibe I'm getting off these is not disappointing in any means. I'm, I'm feeling it. I really also dig this outfit. That is so, that is so classic looking. Classic as in, uh, I think that's what a superhero would be looking like back in the old 70s, 80s, 60s. That's what you would design. Not so much modern era. Um, and I dig that. Okay, that Miss Liberty cover is a lot more interesting. I don't know, something about that looks less weird than the last one. Flare and Lady Arcane and Flare Adventures with Tigress. Yeah, Liberty Girl is looking a little bit like Allison Hannigan there. I must say though, I'm fairly interested. The Saga begins July 4th. I wonder how long that book ran. Looks like we get an appearance of her in here though. Kind of see what's going on with her. Don't want the pages to get stuck together. Well, it looks like she's fighting crime and not particularly saving the entire world. So that's, you know, that's something I kind of appreciate every now and then. Heroes that just fight crime as opposed to have to save the entire world. There's more flare back issues for all of you out there who are looking to become flare fanatics and you want to start tracking down all of these very difficult to find heroic publishing books. And look here, we got flare together again for the first time. Sisters. 20th anniversary. This is her with who we now recognize as Sparkplug. And we also get a Tigress story going on in here. So, uh, Bukus. We'll crack this thing open. Flip through here. We got a big purpley guy. I think, uh, I do think I like Sparkplug's outfit better than Flair's. And it's close, but I dig it. Flair should have kept her white cape, though. That's, that's a key element that I just think looks great. Yep. Okay, so maybe Flair's running this uh, blue and gold costume right now. And that looks even better. Because then we have two kind of retro looking superheroes. And I love puffy sleeves. Like, you can't go wrong with big puffy sleeves and apparently this artist feels the same way because that's how he drew uh that lady victory gal flare giant mm, flare giant size whoop, whoop, whoop. chrissy claws the adventures of chrissy claws i have heard of that i have not uh ever run across one of those tigress the art looks a little bit bizarre it looks fady Maybe it's supposed to look that way at first. I cannot remember what. I don't remember Tigress being blonde. Then again, uh, all the old Flare comics that I have with Tigress in them are black and white, so I guess I didn't actually know. Either way, I'm thinking this looks pretty good. Cat monsters. Always gonna love cat monsters. Champions. Champions was a, a good collectible book. Once again, more back issues of Flair. Looks like a lot of the same, but I'm so very pleased. Um, uh, I'm intrigued by this Liberty Girl. I love puffy sleeves and a vintage outfit. And that is exactly what that is. And even though it's a little bit weird colored, like the color keeps throwing me because it's all coppery. I'm intrigued by it. I'm intrigued enough to go like see if see what the deal was with that series and if it progressed on or if it didn't. 
Anyway, I think I will leave you now. I will leave you with the uh, greatest comic book cover ever created. Uh, is that right there? Has all the elements that it requires. And I thank you guys for watching. That is my story. I will catch you guys later. Bye.